We have been patiently waiting since we first broke the news back in April that GPD were releasing the G1 docking station with built-in eGPU. We finally have the G1 in our hands, so let's check it out with the GPD WinMax 2 2023 with Oculink port. As always, we start with a quick unboxing. First, we have a user manual, which is in Chinese and English. Underneath is the G1 docking station itself, which we will show in more detail shortly. Inside the box is a power lead. We will include the correct adapter for your country. And there is a USB 4 cable. Please note it does not come with an Oculink cable, but you can get one in a bundle when ordering. The GPD G1 measures around 8.8 .8 by 4.3 by 1.1 inches and weighs around 920 grams. The case is made from aluminium alloy, which will help keep it protected if carried in a bag for example. On the front is an Oculink port, more on this later, and a USB 4 port for backwards compatibility with other devices. And on the right side is the power button. On the back is the power input, followed by three USB 3.2 Type-A ports for connecting peripherals to. There is a high-speed 4.0 SD card reader, which is very useful. The USB ports and card reader are only available when connected to a USB 4 host device. For video output, there are two display ports and one HDMI for up to triple monitor support. We know what the outside looks like now, so whilst going over the technical specs, we thought it would make a nice change to show the inside. Check out our separate teardown video for the full process. Inside you can find an AMD Radeon RX 7600M XT GPU. It is based on the RDNA 3 architecture with a base clock of 1500 MHz, which boosts up to 2615 MHz. It has 8 gigs of dedicated GDDR6 RAM running up to 2250MHz. You can connect your device to the GPU in two ways. If your device, such as the WinMax 223, has an Oculink port, then this is the best connection. Or, if you have a USB 3 or above compatible device, you can connect it via the USB 4 port. Oculink is a link directly to and from the PCIe port on the GPU to your device, providing higher bandwidth and stability than USB 4. It also has granular power management capabilities, specific to graphics cards which improves power usage for example. We have a detailed article on our blog all about Oculink, which you can find linked in the description. Over the rest of 2023 onwards, we will be seeing more devices supporting Oculink, such as the WinMax 223 and forthcoming GPD Win Mini. There's also the revised Ioneo 2S. Essentially, this is the best way to get optimal performance from the G1 dock with your device. For the benchmarks, we are using the GPD G1 connected to the WinMax 223 via Oculink for the GPU and USB 4 for the other features such as the USB ports. In interests of transparency, we do have to state that we are still using beta drivers for the WinMax 2 2023. These did cause a lot of issues getting the GPD G1 to play nicely with it. After some time installing different drivers, we got a mostly stable setup, at least enough for us to make a review. For this review, we are connected to a 4K monitor and using that exclusively. We had issues running it with the internal screen, so we will check this out in a future update once it is stable. We are fairly sure that the issues are to do with the lack of proper AMD drivers for the WinMax 2 2023, and by launch they should be fixed. Get a move on AMD. All tests are performed at 28 watts TDP and at 800, 1200, 1440 and 4K resolution with no FSR enabled. This is to get a range of data for comparison between integrated and external GPU. We start the game's benchmarks with Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the lowest graphic settings. We can see a bit of a difference at 800p and especially at 1080, an FPS increase of 23 and 56% respectively. At 1440p we get around a 119% increase in FPS over the integrated graphics. And at 4K we get a very impressive 153% increase from 28 frames to 71. On Cyberpunk we are running on the low graphic settings. At 800p and 1080p we get a FPS increase of around 20% up to 35. At 1440p we get around a 132% increase in frames per second. 
And at 4K, we get a massive 160% increase from 13.5 to 35.2 frames per second. On Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we are running on the minimal graphic settings. At 800p, we get an 83% increase, and at 1080p, a very impressive 194% difference in frames per second. At 1440p, we do not see a massive jump in comparison to 1080p, with only 152%, but at 4K, we do get a decent 181% increase in FPS. For Street Fighter 6, we are running on the highest settings to really stress both GPUs. For simplicity on the chart, we have just the 1440p and 4K on screen. We got the full 60fps at 720p and 1080p on the G1, so it performs far faster than integrated graphics here. At 1440p, we get scores of 23, 26 and 20, versus 55, 55 and 59 frames per second across the three tests. That's around 140% increase on average. And at 4K we were getting around 10 FPS on integrated graphics before it would randomly crash. On the eGPU we got 35, 37 and 30 frames per second across the three tests. That's a massive 240% average increase. Apart from the false issues, at 4K resolutions we are looking at around an average 150% frames per second increase. At 1440p we get around a 108% average increase. For 1080p and below, we do see lower returns on performance. This is generally what we see with higher end graphics cards. They have a large increase in performance over integrated as you go to higher resolutions from 800p up to 4K. If you have a 1440p or higher compatible monitor, then you will see a decent increase in performance with the G1 when it is being used. There's still a decent increase at 1080p, but any lower, you are not really getting the full benefit of using an external GPU compared to integrated with matching graphic settings. Again, we are in the hands of AMD and their lack of driver updates for the 7840U and 780M GPU, which really hampered our benchmarks. This covered simply getting decent benchmark results with the integrated GPU, and even getting the G1 dock to work properly. As a result, the benchmarks for both the integrated and external graphics are not final. We are planning to revisit and retest all of the 7000 series handouts once AMD release proper drivers. In the meantime, we always go with the information we have. We know from the benchmark results it's best for use at 1440p and above, though you can go lower if you wanted to. 1440p is still the sweet spot for gaming with most people but you can also use FSR to run at 4K for example. Onto the actual G1 docking station itself. The main selling point of the G1 is that it's an all-in-one unit. You do not need to buy a separate eGPU, PC power supply, cabling and an enclosure case to keep it all in. And then you have to consider their actual size. Building your own setup simply does not exist at the size of the GPD G1. It is small, very light and extremely portable. In the second part of our GPD G1 review, we will be taking a look at USB performance compared with Oculink. We will also be testing it with other devices which do not have Oculink support, including the original GPD Win 4, AOK Zoe A1 Pro, Ioneo 2S and more. Subscribe to Droik so you don't miss out on that video. You can learn more about it and order your GBD G1 today at droix.co.uk and droix.net for worldwide shipping. The GBD G1 is currently on sale so there's no discount code this week, but you can save over $100 or £100 right now in our sale. That wraps up the first part of our GBD G1 review, we hope you have found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss our next video. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next one.